Hi everyone, my name is Arnaud Blanco and for today's video I'll be discussing the Interpret and Fire model and how to implement it using Python. This video will be divided into two parts, the first part being the theoretical background of the Interpret and Fire model and the second one the actual implementation using Python. Okay, so let me start um, by the human brain. So the human brain is a very complex structure, it is divided into different regions or areas and each one of them has a different functionality. For example, the area, the area that enables us to see is located at the back of the brain. <clears throat> the information in the brain is transmitted thanks to the neurons, which are made up of two main parts, the cell body and the axon. And the information is actually current, and it moves thanks to the charges which arrive at the cell body, travel through the axon and live through the axon terminals. There's always current in a neuron, otherwise it would die or in other words, having current means that the neuron is alive. And the voltage of a neuron in resting state is of minus 70 millivolts, approximately, and when it is excited, it spikes. A neuron is excited by a stimulus. It can be something that you see, a scent that you smell, a memory that pops up in your mind, and so on and so forth. A neuron goes f um, through four stages. The first one being the resting potential, when the neuron is not excited and its voltage remain, remains more or less constant at minus 70 millivolts. The depolarization, when the neuron is excited and the voltage starts increasing until it reaches a threshold of minus 40 millivolts, after that it spikes. The repolarization, the voltage starts decreasing and comes back to its resting state, in particular a bit less of minus 70 millivolts. And finally, the hyperpolarization, where the voltage finally reaches the minus 70 millivolts and the neuron is back to the resting potential. The period of time that it takes the neuron to go back to the resting potential is called the refractory time, and it is usually measured with the uh, symbol tau. The way neurons do this is thanks to their ion channels. An ion channel is a membrane protein that separates the inner part of a cell, in this case a neuron, and the outside and it allows ions to pass through. Re remember that ions are atoms or molecules that do not have a neutral charge because they have more protons than electrons or the other way around. There are two types of ion channels, passive and active. A passive ion channel allows the flux of ions to, uh, with no restriction, whereas an active ion channel only allows the flux of ions under a certain condition. For this video, we're going to focus on voltage-gated ion channels, which allow the flux of ions when there is a given difference in voltage between the extracellular part and intracellular part fluid. In particular, I'm going to focus on voltage-gated sodium channels and voltage-gated potassium channels, which only allow the flux of sodium and potassium ions, respectively. Therefore, when a neuron is stimulated, its voltage keeps increasing until it reaches a th the threshold because, positive, um, because the positive ions are getting into the neuron, thanks to the passive channels. But then, when the voltage reaches the threshold, the voltage gating sodium channels allow the positively charged sodium ions to get into the neuron. These channels close when the voltage reaches around 40 millivolts, and only then do the voltage gating potassium channels open. Thanks to that, the voltage of the neuron decreases to reach the voltage below minus 70 millivolts. And it is then the job of the potassium, uh, sodium potassium pump channels, which, which I'm not going to go deep, deep into, that restore the normal voltage of the neuron of minus 70 millivolts. If you want to know more about this, please check the video from Harvard University, links in the description below. Okay, okay Arnaud, so this is very interesting, but how do we actually implement this in Python? Well, let me start by explaining the Hodgkin-Huxley uh, Hodgkin model, which was proposed in 1952, and it attempted to represent what I've just explained by means of the following circuit. The component, components of this circuit are the capacitor CM, which represents the membrane of the neuron, the two electrical conductances, um, which represent the voltage-gated channels, the voltage sources EN and EL represent the flow of ions, and the current source IP injects current into the system. The problem with this model is that it's very difficult to solve, given that it requires the computation of differential equations. Hence, in order to minimize the computational complexity, we're going to make use of the interpret and fire model instead, which is a simplification of the Hodgkin-Huxley model. 
The circuit used for this model is the following, and it can be solved very easily with basic knowledge of circuits. So suppose that we want to compute the current of this circuit as a function of time, so what do we do? Well, since it's a circuit in parallel, the total current will be the sum of the current in the left side part of the circuit and the current in the right side part of the circuit. We know that the voltage in the right side part of, uh, of, the, of the circuit will be current times resistance because of Ohm's law, so we can isolate IR in this equation and it gives us this. We then know that the capacitance of, of a capacitor is its charge divided by its voltage, so we can isolate Q here and by differentiating on both sides of the equality, we obtain a definition of current, which is charge over time. So current is the derivative of Vc with respect to time time c, which does not depend on t. Therefore, I of t is this, and of course we can rearrange this in a nice way by noticing, for example, that Cr is time is the time that it takes the capacitor to fully charge, that is tau. And what this we will define, and this is what we will define as a time that it takes an event to spike, which is around 20 milliseconds. Therefore, we're going to use this beautiful expression when the voltage v, uh, v of t is less than the threshold, and when the voltage reaches the threshold, we're going to make this neuron spike, reset, and do nothing during the refractory time. Okay, so, but we still have a problem. Like, how are we going to implement this in Python, like a differential equation? Well. Does Euler's method sound familiar to you? Well, Euler's method allows us to approximate first to the differential equations like ours with this expression here. Um, I notice that we always need to set some initial values to make it work properly. For more information about Euler's method, uh, please check the, the links in the description box, okay? And then what about the fire? Well, we're going to use a direct function at the moment of the spike. And the last question is, um, when will an neuron spike? Under what condition? Well, we can do that with a Poisson distribution, given that it models the number of times that an event occurs in a given interval of time or space. And then we can set a threshold so that when a probability is greater than the threshold, we can make the neuron spike. Okay, so let's now try to implement this in Python. Okay, so as you can see, I'm using Jupyter Notebook for this project. And what we first need to do is to import the libraries we're going to use. In my case, I'm using NumPy um, for the arrays, PyPlot for the plots, Poisson for the Poisson distribution, and random to generate random numbers. We'll see all this in a minute. The, the first thing we want to do is create a function that implements Euler's method. As I mentioned, Euler's method implements this formula so we're going to define a function called Euler that has as parameters y0 and t0, which are the initial values. Then sometimes step h and a threshold thr. The first thing we are going to do is to initialize the array y and then set our current t0 and y0 as t and y. What we want is to run Euler's method as long as y is less than our threshold, which is minus 40 millivolts. So to do that, we make use of a while and just implement the formula. And what we are going to return is the array y values and t, the time, which I'm going to explain why later. f of t and y and y0 here is a differential equation for the circuit that, that I've just explained earlier. The variables for the differential equation are these ones, and we are, we are able to tune them as we want. So now that we have these two functions defined, we are ready to define the function that will do the whole simulation. It will be called IF, and it will have as arguments V rest, the voltage of the neuron at rest, H, the time step, the threshold, TF, that is the duration in time of the, si of the simulation, T ref, that is the refractory time, which we said was going to be 20 milliseconds, and lambda for the Poisson distribution. The first thing we need to do is to convert the time in seconds into indices, because in an array we don't have time but a given number of elements. So the condition we want to set here is keep calculating values until we reach the, the end of the array. Here, i is the variable that we use as a counter for the positions of v values, t for the time, and step to count the number of potential spikes. We first generate a random threshold between 0 and 1, 
We then generate a probability following uh, Poisson distribution with mu as lambda. We increase step by one because now we are, we are at the first potential spike, that is the potential spike number one. And then if the probability of the Poisson distribution is less than the, than the random threshold, then the neuron is not, is not stimulated. So we generate a random period of time in which there is no stimulation. We say here that it has to be a number between 0 and 4 times the refractory time. If there's enough time, that is i plus the random period of time is less than the length of the, of the array, then we will fill that space with the resting voltage. If there is any enough space, then we will fill the remaining space with the resting voltage. Now imagine that the probability is actually greater than the random threshold. Well, then First of all, we're going to compute the Euler's function, which will give us an array with the result of, differentially, of the differential equation nt, which is at the point where Euler's method stops. Okay? Then we convert this t into indices again, and if there's space, we compute the values of the different stages. The first stage is the resting state, of which we have calculated the values with Euler's method. The second one is the, the depolarization, where the neuron spikes, so we add 80 millivolts to the neuron's voltage. The, th the third one is the repolarization, where the neuron goes back to the resting potential, a little bit less actually. And finally, the hyperpolarization, where the voltage is back to minus 40 millivolts. And the last step is to update the index i and time t. Notice again that if we don't have space, we just fill the remaining space with the resting voltage and return an array with voltages. So now we just want to call this function with the parameters of our choice and plot the result. Et voila! I hope you really enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, just comment down below in the comment section and I'll try to reply as soon as I can. Thanks a lot. Bye.